So burnt ends are traditionally made from parts of a brisket, sort of those crusty bits that get a little bit burnt, hence the name burnt ends. You add sauce to it, cook it some more on the smoker, the grill, whatever you're doing. But today we're doing chuck roast burnt ends. And we're gonna start by breaking them down into the pieces. So we're not cooking them first and then cutting them up. We're gonna start right from the beginning with smaller pieces, get rub all around them, a lot of great flavor. And I'm gonna let those soak that flavor in overnight. And tomorrow morning, I'm gonna get those out on the SNS Grills kettle. It's gonna be great. So I have two chuck roasts here because I wanna make quite a bit of burn ends. And I just wanna start breaking them down. Now this is the bigger one. You can kind of see it's thicker than this one. And I'm guessing it's probably about a pound heavier, but we're gonna break them both down the same way. I'm gonna start with this one. I'm gonna move this guy aside. And you'll notice that there are these fat veins running through chuck roast. And these are USDA choice chuck roast, and they actually have some pretty good marbling. So these fat veins, I'm not gonna worry about. Normally you just leave those in when you're doing a whole chuck roast and things render and soften. And that's what we're going for today. Now, because this is so thick, I'm gonna break these down into bigger chunks and then cut them into smaller chunks that way. I want these to be like an inch, inch and a half in total thickness. We're just going for slabs first here. Now this one, you can see what I'm talking about, how thick this is here. I don't want a piece like this big. So I'm gonna cut that in half. And this is about the size I want. Something like this, maybe an inch, inch and a half thick. So I'm just gonna keep breaking this down. This way first, get that thickness I want. Like that. Really nice marbling here. It's not prime, but you know, Pretty good for choice. Now, if you have a section at the end with a lot of fat, your choice can be to trim that off and just sacrifice that or leave it in there. I'm gonna leave it in there. And I'm gonna be smoking these with hickory tomorrow. And they're not all gonna be the exact same size and that's all right. Some of these end pieces, you can see they really sort of thin out there. This one will be sort of a longer one. Just work it the best you can, get the best size you possibly can. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and break down the other one and I'll bring you back when it's time to season these. Now for this step of seasoning the pieces that I have arranged here on a tray, you can use anything you want. You could just use salt and pepper, you could use a favorite rub. I'm gonna be using Southern Hot Spitality from Gulf Coast Smoke. This is one of their a little bit hotter rubs. It's not exceedingly hot. It's not gonna burn your mouth, but it is a little bit of heat in there with the sweet. So I just wanna go ahead and start giving a good coating here and we will roll everybody around, make sure that they get to know their neighbors and get some of the seasoning from them. You could also do this in a large bowl if you want and don't really need any binder on this. There's plenty of surface moisture. And now we're just gonna start rolling everybody around in here to get a good coating. Also, when we put these on the grill tomorrow, if I notice that there's any kind of missing spots that don't have a good amount of rub, I can just hit it with some rub right there too. I just love chuck roast. It's one of those cuts that I think more people now are getting familiar with. It used to be that, you know, people weren't as familiar with it and using it as sort of like a brisket substitute. You know, it's been called poor man's brisket. Well, you know, it's not exactly cheap <laughs> anymore. Maybe it was at one time, but you can get smaller ones than, you know, full-size packer briskets, which is nice. You don't have to get a, you know, 12 to 17 pound brisket. You can get, you know, a three or four or five pound chuck roast. In fact, I think these two together weigh about seven pounds. So it's a good amount of meat, but it's not a full brisket, which is a plus sometimes. And I know you're all looking at me going, oh my God, you're holding that shaker with a dirty hand, the glove there. Yeah, I know, I'll clean it off. I'm the only one that uses these. Could have put it in another shaker bottle, but sometimes you gotta roll with what you got. Give you another little toss here, a little more of a shake. Be generous with the rub. This can take it. Chuck roast can take a good amount of seasoning, just like brisket. 
I'm just trying to spread these out a little bit here so that when I put the plastic wrap loosely over these, you can cover them and everybody gets a little bit of their own space. All right, that looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and cover this with some plastic wrap loosely. It's gonna go in the refrigerator and I'll see you out at the grill tomorrow. All right, the SNS Grills kettle is up to temp, putting out some smoke. Let's get our chuck roast pieces on. And we're gonna have a full house here today with these pieces. Got a lot of them to get on here. I'm trying to get the bigger ones closer to the slow and sear. This is gonna be a tight, tight fit today. We're gonna have to do some cramming, I think. May have to freeze a few of these pieces for another day. All right, let's get the lid on and get smoking. So a couple things, you saw that I have water in the reservoir, the slow ones here, and the wood I put in today is not hickory. I know I said hickory, I think yesterday when I was seasoning these. I have some red oak that I haven't used, decided to use that. So our target temp today is somewhere between 225 and 250. I'll adjust the vents as necessary on the slow and sear kettle. This really likes to run at about 275 degrees, so I'm probably gonna close the lower vent all the way and only use the smoke hole. That'll allow me to really tune that inflow of air. We're gonna come back in an hour, check these, see how we're doing. All right, we've been going for an hour. Our temp on the SNS Girls kettle is holding just above 225 right now. As I mentioned, the slow ends here I find really likes that 275 temp once you dial it in. So did have to play with a little bit today and get just using the smoke hole, maybe, I don't know, a third open most of the time, but we've dialed it in. So let's go ahead and check our chuck roast burnt end pieces, see how we're doing. These are looking really good right now. I do want to get a temperature just as a guide. It's going to take quite a few more hours. Let me see if I can get this so you can see it here. It's showing about 153. See back here. I don't know if you can see that, that's 148. But more than the temperature, it's the tenderness. And these are not, you know, tender yet. We don't expect them to be. We do have good surface moisture on most of them, so I'm not worried about spritzing. But I do want to add a fresh piece of red oak right now. So I'm going to get the lid back on, and we're going to let these go for about 90 minutes before we check them again. So I'll see you back here in about 90 minutes. All right, we've been going another 90 minutes. I wanna get a look at these, but I'm pretty sure it's time to get them in a foil pan, sauce them, seal that up with foil, get them back on and let them finish to tenderize. So let's take a look. Got really good color on these. I'm not even gonna do a temp check or a tenderness check because it's time to get these in the pan and sauce them. And we are gonna cram everybody into one pan. It's actually a double pan because I don't like to poke a hole in the bottom. I'm gonna get my lid back on so we don't stoke the fire too much. And the sauce I'm using today is some Kinder's Cali Gold. I've used this many times, I love it. I'm gonna get in here and mix these around a little bit. I'm gonna get everybody coated here. I want to add a little bit of water here. It kind of helps prevent any burning of the sugars in that sauce. A little more sauce here. Let's go with the whole bottle. All right, let's get these back on. And I'm gonna let these go for two hours. I'm not gonna do anything, not check anything. So I'll see you back here in two hours. All right, we've been going two hours in foil, a total of four and a half hours. So let's open this up and see how our chuck roast burn ends are doing. So 
So these I'm going to check for tenderness here. I'm not too concerned about temperature, it's more the tenderness. Those are feeling good, but still a little bit of resistance. I want to mix these around a bit. So these have a little bit to go to get tender. So what I'm going to do now is transfer them back onto the grates out of the foil pan. And make sure everybody's got a good coating of sauce here. Gonna make room for everybody here. Glad I put foil in the bottom of the indirect side because it's gonna be messy. All right, I'm gonna get the lid back on and we're gonna check these in an hour. So we are not out at the grill <laughs> watching this finish. This has never happened to me before. A swarm of bees came through and sort of kind of hovered around this palm tree right next to where I cook in my neighbor's yard. And I'm not a big fan of bees when they're in large numbers like that. So I just grabbed all my camera gear, brought it inside. The chuck roast burn ends finished up out there. Now the total cook time on these was about six hours, maybe six hours and five minutes. And now I've got a plate of mashed potatoes here and we're just gonna put some of our chuck roast burnt ends on top of these. Man, these came out looking good. Great color. I think mashed potatoes are a great way to serve these or you can just eat them <laughs> like candy because they are as good as candy. Absolutely. Maybe one more tiny little piece. We'll cram one down in there. I'm just gonna take one of these small pieces first for a taste, and then we'll get some potatoes with everything else. So here goes. Mm. Chuck roast is a nearly perfect substitute for brisket when you're talking about making something like burnt ends. The flavor is very, very close when you cook it slow like this and give it a good rub. And even when you're glazing it for the burnt ends, I would definitely not turn this down. Mm. And you can see right here, it just shreds apart. Ah, very hot, <laughs> but nice and tender. Can't ask for much more in a meal. I'm really, really happy with these results. Thank you.